Alright, so welcome back everybody. So the subject of today's video is going to be water chemistry. Now, that is something that can be very complicated, very complex, and honestly somewhat intimidating to most normal people who don't have an in-depth understanding of chemistry and don't necessarily feel too comfortable throwing random chemicals into their beer. I totally understand that because that was me not too long ago. So what I want to do with this video is break that complicated, intimidating subject down into something that the average normal human being uh, with a possible high school chemistry education, but not necessary, uh, can understand. And hopefully I can take this video and show you how to use water chemistry to take your beer from being honestly pretty great to excellent. It was a single thing for me that, for example, took my IPAs, uh, which were bland despite having like 80, 90 IBUs in them, and turn that around so that now they're crispy and bright and the hops come through very clearly. Um, and that was all water chemistry. That was the only thing that I changed in my brewing process. Now I'm not an expert, uh, neither in chemistry nor in brewing, but it works for me. So here I am to tell you about how to do it at my understanding and my level. So this is going to be kind of a diversion from my typical uh, grain to glass or tasting videos. Um, I already have some educational videos that are buried deep in the channel and they're really old and poorly edited. I'm going to come back around sometime and redo those and also update them with the, uh, the knowledge that I've learned since then. So the starting point here, if you have decent, clean tasting tap water um, that's not too metallic, that's not too soft or alkaline, and that's not too chlorinated, so like not chlorinated to a level that you can taste, you will honestly make great beer with that. However, if you're watching this video, you probably are of the mindset that you want to dabble with water chemistry and see what happens. So this is what we're going to cover today. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about the components uh, that we have in your brewing water and in generally your standard tap water. Uh, that's going to cover a little bit of chemistry. I'll try to keep it very short and very simple. Secondly, we're going to talk about how to look up your water report and interpret that, figure out what that means, what the, uh, how to find those chemicals that I'm going to talk about in part one. Uh, the third thing we're talking about is how to calculate for the proper profile of water for what beer you want. The fourth thing is to talk about how to uh, actually adjust your base water profile with brewing salts um, to generate the desired water profile for your brewing. So. Without further ado, here's part one, which is going to be the chemistry part. So I'm going to throw out a whole bunch of terms during the course of this video that you're going to kind of need to understand what that means. Basically in brewing water, we're concerned with ions and ions are basically just charged particles. All right. So um, we have positively charged particles, which are called cations and negatively charged particles, which are called anions. So the cations we're concerned about are calcium, magnesium, and sodium. The, uh, the negative particles, the anions, are bicarbonate, carbonate, sulfate, and chloride. So these all will combine and bond together to form what are typically known as salts, where, for example, sodium chloride, sodium and chloride, bond together to become table salt. So, pretty cool stuff. Uh, different concentrations of these ions in your brewing water will dramatically change what happens during the brew. Uh, so besides cations and anions, the third thing we care about is pH. pH is simply the term for acidity versus alkalinity. So how acidic is something versus how basic is it. This is measured on a scale of 0 to 14 um, and standard neutral stuff like um, basically distilled water has a pH of 7 right in the middle. So beer is acidic that generally has a uh, pH of around 5 to 6 uh, but these different compounds that we add in are going to change the pH um, depending on how much we put in. However, don't worry, there's calculators for that. You don't need to be a rock star chemistry student to understand this. Also within water, there's terms I'm gonna throw out there like hardness and alkalinity. So hardness is basically a measurement of how much calcium and magnesium is actually in the water. If you've ever had well water, well water tends to be very hard. Um, and that if you're thinking of like kind of a metallic flavor, you're about on target, that's what it tastes like. Alkalinity, on the other hand, is a higher pH, it's more basic. All this means is that it has higher concentrations of carbonate and bicarbonate in it. Interestingly enough, referred to as soft water. So when you drink water that has been treated often, um, usually tap water is most commonly very alkaline. 
Um, it has kind of a soft feel to it. Now previously I mentioned the cations and the anions and how they can combine together to be uh, to form salts. Now when salts are dissolved in water, they separate back into those individual ions, which is how we actually manipulate our brewing waters. So I got a bunch of brewing salts here that I'm gonna show you and explain to you what they do. I highly recommend having all of these if you intend on messing with your brewing water. They are incredibly inexpensive. Uh, just so you know, this does not cost a lot of money to get into. So the first salt we're gonna talk about is calcium sulfate, also known as gypsum. When you put this into your water, it's gonna separate into calcium and sulfate. The next one is calcium chloride. This separates into, well, calcium and chloride. The next one is Epsom salt. So this, make sure first of all, you get food grade versions. And this is magnesium sulfate. So it's gonna separate into, well, you guessed it. Here's the trend, magnesium and sulfate. The next is the standard table salt or sodium chloride. This is gonna separate into, well, sodium and chloride. But it is important that you get the non-iodized version. So this uh, is Morton kosher salt. I don't normally like eat kosher foods as a matter of principle, but this is a very coarse salt. So it's just actually very useful for cooking. However, it happens to be this particular brand and this particular style happens to be non-iodized. And next up is calcium carbonate, which is actually chalk or limestone, depending on what form it's in. Um, but this is going to separate into calcium and carbonate. This is a very large container of sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda. This is twofold. Number one, it is going to increase your sodium and your carbonate counts, uh, but also you can use it to raise your mash pH should the other ingredients that you add into your mash actually bring the pH down below the region we want it to be in. So it's kind of a multi-use uh, brewing addition. And the last thing I don't actually have on hand, but that is lactic or phosphoric acid. Um, these are things that you can use to lower the mash pH should you need to. All right, so now that all of the chemistry is out of the way, um, we're gonna talk about part two, which is how to actually put this stuff into your beer and figure out how much you need. First thing to do is figure out what is actually going on with your own standard tap water. Now, if you are choosing to use distilled water or reverse osmosis water, um, you can ignore this whole part and start from scratch, assuming that the mineral contents in all that water is simply zero. So most people like me either don't have the, uh, the really super awesome reverse osmosis setup or don't want to go out and buy a ton of uh, distilled water to brew with. So what I'm going to do now is cover how to look up your water report. Now the first step to this is to look up your local water report. Now if this doesn't actually have a good comprehensive listing of all of the chemicals in it, it should, it's generally required by law, or if you use well water, what you can do is actually purchase a, uh, a kit um, to take a sample of your water and send it into a, a brewing lab basically and then they'll come back with results and tell you what your content is. Um, that's especially useful if you've got something like a well. Um, a whole bunch of companies out there that do this and it's relatively inexpensive, but if you have tap water from a city, your local water report should suffice. So basically here, um, I pulled up my local water report. You can generally Google these. They should be available through your town or city website um, as a water quality report. Uh, you don't wanna have a piece of paper handy to write down all this stuff. But uh, yeah, as you can see, there's a ton of chemicals in here. I mean, there is like a hundred something uh, different individual chemicals listed. We're only concerned about the ones that I mentioned at the beginning of this video though. So starting off, you wanna look for sodium. So just kind of control F in here and look for that stuff. You're gonna see it listed as milligrams per liter. That is equivalent to parts per million or PPM. Um, so here, WTP stands for water treatment plant. That is the amount that comes out of the pipe to water treatment plant, uh, which is what they're required to report. So I have 55.4 parts per million of sodium in my water, which is actually, well, it's tolerable, but it's a relatively high amount compared to the rest of the things that are in my water. Calcium is down here. Uh, that is 5.5, and magnesium is right here, and it's at 0.81. Those are all of our cations. That was relatively easy. Next up, we're gonna look for um, our anions. Chloride was easy to find, it's right here, it's 13 uh, parts per million. And also, it helps to look for your pH, uh, which is actually right here. Uh, most water reports will list that. Now notice that my pH is actually a really pleasant 
and uncommonly slightly acidic 5.6 um, or 5.7. Now, one of the biggest problems I had when I was brewing in my old place was that my pH actually turned out to be 9. So it was actually very basic, and adding malts didn't actually even reduce it that much. So that explained why my beer was turning out so kind of uh, meh and bland. And then sulfate is right here, and then we see four parts per million. Um, now carbonate can be a little tricky. So if your water report is like mine, you may not actually be able to find carbonate by simply searching for carbonate. What you're gonna look for instead is alkalinity. Now that's right here, and you see alkalinity total as 16. So now that you've looked up your water report, or you've had your water tested, uh, and you know the concentrations of the important ions in the water, now we gotta figure out what we wanna do with it. So as you're making your next beer, um, you wanna figure out what kind of water profile we want with it. So. There's a couple ways to do this. Um, you can easily find water profiles for certain styles of beer all over the internet. Um, however, I recommend downloading a spreadsheet that's called Brune Water. That helped me a lot. I'll leave a link down in the description. Um, I'm not related with anything that that website does. It's actually not for profit in the first place, but this is a spreadsheet that uh, takes in all of your base water values and then lets you pick a profile uh, that you want for your actual beer that you're trying to brew and lets you mess with how much stuff you need to add to actually achieve that water profile. Um, it's a little bit complicated to use at first, but there's plenty of tutorials out there. I'm not gonna cover that in this video for the sake of length, um, but I highly recommend that you do look into a tutorial for it. Like I said, it's relatively easy to find, but uh, it helps out a lot. What you're basically gonna do now, we're gonna mess with the hardness, the pH, and the uh, ratio of chloride to sulfate. If you're brewing a beer where the more important ingredient is the hops, for example, IPA. If you're brewing a beer that's classically somewhat hoppy and you want the hops to come through brighter, you want the beer to taste a little drier, you're more concerned with the hop flavor than you are with the malt flavor, you want a higher ratio of sulfates to chlorides. You're talking at least double the amount of sulfates to chlorides, but usually a ratio of four to one or higher is good for IPAs and other bitter beers like that. Now on the flip side, if you're brewing something malty that's not really about hops, like this, my last bottle of Oktoberfest, you're gonna want a higher ratio of chlorides to sulfates instead. Same rules apply, two to one is, except, is uh, the bare minimum, four to one is generally good or more than that. But this is gonna accentuate the malty sweetness of the beer and it's going to generally make it, uh, make the hops a little less um, noticeable. Now, be warned, you can overdo it in either direction, so just keep that in mind. Don't go over, the, don't go overboard with it. And that right there is pretty much the biggest single uh, influencer of water chemistry that is most noticeable in the flavor. Next one is hardness. Hardness is going to help with your mash, and it's going to help with the flocculation of yeast. Generally, we want at least 150 parts per million. Um, at a concentration of both calcium and magnesium together, but that's not really the most important component for uh, water chemistry. And then lastly is pH. Now, when you add pretty much all of these salts to a uh, beer, you're gonna lower that pH. You're gonna make it more acidic. Now, ideally for the best mash, you want it to be between 5.2 and 5.6 uh, as far as a pH. And if you really want to be precise with this, you can get a pH meter um, and you can test the pH of your mash once it starts. However, it's not 100% necessary. I know I'm gonna piss somebody off by saying that, but I have not used one yet because it's actually a decent amount of money and a lot of maintenance to actually upkeep your pH meter and keep it calibrated. Um, They're relatively sensitive instruments. You can go ahead and use pH strips, however, which are basically little pieces of paper that change color depending on what pH of substance they're exposed to, uh, to kind of get a ballpark idea. Um, but basically, if your beer is too acidic in the mash, it can generally turn out a little tart, a little drier than you want it to, a little harsher than you want it to. If it's on the flip side and it's more basic and you have a high pH, um, like seven and a half and higher is generally what would be called a high pH. Um, that is gonna be more of a dull flavor and it's just not gonna be very, it's not gonna have much depth to it. That's basically what's gonna happen there. Also be aware that roasted malt and acidulated malt will both lower the pH of your mash by a certain amount. So just take that in mind when you're brewing stuff like stouts or, uh, or sours. So now that we know about 
what's in the water and how to find out what's in your water and what it's going to do to the beer. How do we use that? How do we put that all together? So first of all, you got to start with your own water. Um, now, one of the more nasty chemicals in water that is common in tap water is chlorine or chloramines. Now, these are both chemicals that are used to kill off organic matter um, and kind of like bacteria and stuff that gets in the wastewater treatment plant that uh, is just not something you want to drink. It's, it's pretty common if your water tastes like chlorine or smells like chlorine, it's probably got chlorine in it. And that is just not going to make very good beer. So the easiest way to get rid of that is do what I do, get a charcoal uh, filter for your faucet. You can screw it right in and then you just filter your water straight through the tap. Alternatively, you can use reverse osmosis water or straight up, you know, distilled water if you want. Um, but also you can get these which are called Camden tablets. These tablets will help remove the chlorine or chloramines from your water and completely and will neutralize that whole thing. So it's usually a good starting point. Now that you have your water profile, you're going to want to go into either Brune Water or if you're like me and use Beersmith for all of your brewing, there's actually a water tab in there. You can input your own individual water using the results from your water report and then you can add in these individual salts um, to find out how they influence your final result. Uh, so this is Beersmith. Uh, so when you're calculating your additions to the water, it's gonna look something like this. So here is your base water profile. These are all of the individual ions that I have in my water loaded into Beersmith. Brune water does the same thing for free, so keep that in mind. Each of these is the individual salt that we want to add in. Now, as you can see, each salt is made up of a single uh, cation and a single anion. So when you dissolve a salt into water, you see it only releases two ions, and we need a total of six. So you have to use some certain combination of all of these ingredients to actually achieve your desired results, which are gonna be listed down here. So this was, for example, for my black IPA, this was my desired profile. I put each of the concentrations I wanted in here, and then I messed with the additions right here um, to try and get as close as I could to the actual uh, water profile. So these are the totals that I ended up with, and these are the additions that I put in. Now, if you wish, you can dilute your initial mash water with reverse osmosis water, distilled water, etc. cetera, uh, but most of the time that's not completely necessary. One of the most important things for this also is getting a scale that can measure in grams down to the single individual gram, because most of the time you're actually gonna be adding like one or two grams of each of these salts. So that's just something to, important to have always as a brewer. So now that you know what's actually in brewing water and how that works, how to look up what's in your own water and how that's gonna influence your beer, how to figure out what kind of profile you want for your water and how that's gonna actually influence the flavor of your beer, how to calculate those additions um, of brewing salts to your water to figure out how to get to that final profile. The last thing is the fun part and that is how to actually put it all together, adding it in and that is the easiest part. So here I'm just going to leave you with some recycled clips from my black IPA brew day where I did this for the first time and let you just see it right there. So basically what you want to do now is uh, add these salts to your brewing water. All right so this water is relatively hot. It's at about 120 degrees um, so that'll actually aid in the uh, dilution of the salts. So basically just kind of kind of dump it in and uh, stir it up. All right, so if you're still watching, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Uh, I think this was probably going to be a longer one, uh, unfortunately. It, hopefully, I was able to keep it at a more simple level and not get too wrapped around the details. Uh, let me know if it still ended up being somewhat complicated or if there's something that's not quite coming together for you. I'd be glad to try and help. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to drop those down below in the comment section. So if you're a more experienced brewer and you have more hands-on time with playing with the water chemistry, adapting it, uh, and just want to talk more about that to uh, if there's something that I missed, if there's something I didn't quite get right, um, please feel free to actually go ahead and correct me. Leave it in the comments below so people can see it, so they can understand it, and a new person coming along who's trying this for the first time can have a good understanding of it, um, in addition to what I covered earlier. All right, thanks for sticking around. If you like this video, if you like watching me do what I do, please consider dropping a like or subscribe. Both of these things help my channel out quite a bit. To my current subscribers, thank you very much for always sticking around and being awesome as you all are. And as always, I'll see you in the next one, so cheers.